All right, we're going to go back on the record. Yes, give me a left. So, with regards to state's exhibit number six, has that been redacted? Yes, Judge. I have labeled that as 6A at this point. What to do? All right. Okay, 6A is the uh, Cahill. Correct. Cahill body cam that with the further redactions, redacting out okay. the uh, any any mentions of any weapon or ammo. Okay. So, I'll give you the redactions and. Uh, I have no objection. All right. So then you can offer that state's exhibit 6A. You can offer that uh, in front of the jury. And then if there are no objections, there are no objections. Uh, Deputy Mejia, I think she's lining them up. Could you let her know we're ready for them? All right, we are, and sorry, both parties, with regards to state's exhibit number five, uh, defense, your objection, the court did sustain that objection. Yes, Your Honor. All right, let's bring the jurors in. All right, to the jury. <clears throat> Oh, please be seated. We stand for you. All right, everyone, you may be seated. I'd stated it's still your witness. Thank you, Judge. At this time, state would offer an evidence previously tendered to defense exhibit 6A. Any objections? No, Your Honor. All right, state's exhibit number 6A is admitted without objection. May we publish to the jury, Judge? Yes. And Officer Cahill, um, just to kind of refresh the jury's memory, um, what is happening on this video? Um, on this video, I made contact with uh, Jose and um, I'm basically asking him uh, what information he has about the incident or anything involved with uh, what we're there investigating. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going, sir? Yeah. Uh, what's your name? Jose. Jose, okay. So you know everything that's going on with everything here? Uh, I know a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to just step out and tell me, I guess, what's going on? I, I honestly don't want to be involved with it. Just like, honestly, I, I understand honestly. that. I, yeah, I understand you want to be involved. I mean, that's. I have to step out. I'm focused. Yeah, just because I just want to talk to you out here. I, just, I don't, you know, I don't know you or anything. You don't know me or anything like that. We're just gonna talk here, just like I'm talking with everyone here. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on right now. Okay. You just leave the hair side. Okay. No, you can leave the hair side. Uh, you can, no, it's all right. You can leave the hair. Did we got to block your front. And I'm just pausing it for a second. Officer Cahill, the, the other voice besides Jose that we are, are hearing but not seeing on the video, whose voice is that? Uh, that is my voice. Uh, yeah, I'll turn it off for a second. All right, so tell me what happens. Uh, well, she, she, she was having fun with me, I guess, because my mom fed her or something. Like, she, what she threw up was soup and other shit. I don't know. Well, anyways, she was having a hard time breathing, like a hard time breathing. Okay. Like, like I already knew what it was from, and I was saying, I took her to the hospital. You know, and it was from a uh, food in her lungs. And she was like, oh, that's what I'm just, she was like, oh, I'm just breathing. And every time I threw on my back, and like, like, uh, like, 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 it was soon, right. uh, like she had noodles, apple, uh, the banana monk up, and the uh, fucking apple sauce. Okay. 
Oh, what was she not feeling good that she was coming out? Honestly, I don't know, because I wasn't there. I was just there to everything else, to the last part. Oh, okay. Because she was at over there at her house. Okay. You know who stays over there with her? No. Is it just her by herself? I, I don't know. You're not no. sure? Oh, I, I, I got a yeah. lot of comments. Maybe like... Not even a year. Not even a year. Okay. okay. It's like on and off a year? Or... Yeah, it's on and off. Okay. Has she yeah. ever lived with you or anything like that? Oh, yeah. One time. What's that? Yeah. Oh, okay. so... So I know you said that you're not really sure if you were, I guess, in the picture with yeah, going yeah. out for child care and everything like that. Are you frequently around the kids or is it, um, is it normal for you not to see them for a couple of days? Yeah, yeah, it's normal for not to see them. Because we get in like little arguments all the time. Like, how often do you think you're, you see the kids? Sometimes. How often, do you, how often do you think you see the kid? Oh, whenever she used to live with me, I saw my thing. And what was that? So a month ago, she moved out? Yeah. Like three weeks or like a month? About four weeks. Yeah. 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 And how are they doing? They're doing good. Like two days ago, she was doing good too. I saw two days. They weren't sick at all. Like that. She was. She wasn't sick, but she was like, like fatigued. Like she's like You could tell she was like getting sick. Did she have like an injury or something like that? Not hurt. that. Not that I know. She was walking fine. We were talking fine. Everything like. You didn't even ask her. Like she, she was. We were talking. She told me yesterday. She was fine, she was eating, talking, everything. Okay. And then I'm guessing she got in the same Okay. So, so three days ago, or something like that, I guess it's five days ago. Yeah, like two okay. and, then, and then she was telling me she saw her last night, yesterday. She was fine, like she was walking fine. fine. Yeah. So then today, what, what changed? Like, how did it Oh, I don't know. know. She just called me and told me, you need to call me, my man. She just said you need a phone. I don't come in. I saw I showed up. But you want to like bring me up on it? Come on. No, no. no. She, she was like, she sounds scared. You know, so I didn't even ask. So yeah, where was she? Yeah, I was in the front. She was at the At the front's house. Okay. So she was at the front's house and she was like, you need to come here. So you, and the front lives in an apartment. Same, same apartment complex. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So same apartment complex. You walked over there, I'm assuming? No, I was I was on the street. I was on the village actually. Oh, okay. So you go back to the apartment yeah, complex. Go, 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 go. Okay, and when you pulled up to the apartment complex, um, what was your house? She was like like having trouble breathing, staying there. She was conscious and everything. She was having trouble breathing. That's all. Okay. And, and she was fine. We got her fine. Like I was over in her bed, chatting her like what? And then she was fine. And what was she doing? Uh. Not that we were just kind of in the situation. Like she was fine. Hey, can you just stand out there? You see me one second. I just got to talk to you. Uh... Hey, how's it going? Hello, hey, how's it going, sir? Uh, what's your name? Okay. All right, Officer Cahill, was that the extent of you talking to Jose that evening? Uh, no. The full extent of us talking? Okay, um, let me let me be clear. Um, did you talk to Jose about what happened that to Mercedes any any further this evening? Um, I mean, I believe we did have more conversations throughout the night. Um, for the remainder of the night, um, we were in contact with Jose, and then um, eventually when we were transporting him as well. Okay, um, with what we just heard, um. Jose told you, and based on your training and experience, was what he told you consistent with Mercedes' condition and how you saw her? No, it was not. And why do you say that? Um, uh, a lot of the descriptions that he was using um, 
as far as her being fine, um, multiple times saying she was fine. The injuries that I saw. Um, object to speculation here. All right, that'll be overruled. The injuries that I saw um, were not something that had happened within a three day period um, where he had said the last time that he was with her was three days ago. Um, these were injuries that were far beyond three days um, and the condition that she was in and those injuries, um, which were very apparent to be much farther past three days. Um, myself, I would never be able to look at a child in that condition and ever describe them as fine. Um, and going back to what Jose had told you, um, did he in fact describe um, an illness or something of the sorts that he had seen within those last three days? Yes, he described her as fatigued. Okay. Um, how long um, did Jose say it had been since Katrina and Mercedes and Jordan had lived with him, if you remember? He said uh, approximately a month. Um, based on your training and experience, did you find that his answers were consistent to you? Our object to speculation. Overruled. Uh, based on my training experience, no, I did not feel like his answers were consistent. Also object to an opinion about kind of evidence. Sustained. Can the jury be uh, instructed to disregard? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're instructed to disregard the last answer. Plus a witness. Defense. Also, okay, you know, you, we, we all just saw that video, correct? Yes. And you would agree with me that Jose was cooperative with you, correct? Yes, he was very well. And he responded to your questions, correct? Yes, he did. And uh, there was no, uh, you had no difficulty with him in that interaction, correct? Um, I mean, from not, what we saw, was there any- From uh, what you it, saw, no. It, okay. Um, And what you observed with Katrina was her, uh, I believe you said that uh, she did not appear authentic. Is that what you said? Yes. That she appeared to um, sort of be trying to feign emotion that she didn't really have. Yes. Um, and the way she responded, you would agree, would be a way that no mother, real mother, would respond. Uh, Judge, I'm going to object to opinion. Testimony. Sustained. Okay. Her response um, was, was she, was she crying when you interacted with her? She was trying to give the appearance that she was crying. And, but in fact, her demeanor was um, sort of, uh, do you see anger? And uh, like, did you, was she angry? Did she have a hot temper? Did it appear to you? The uh, anger I saw was in her conversation with Jose. Okay. Um, but she was aggressive, correct? when they were interacting, yes. Um, and she, you're, based on your interaction with her, she was evasive in the information she was giving you, right? I wouldn't say evasive. Um, she was answering the questions, but I would say she was, I didn't believe that she was giving me the full story that she was, I, I believe she was telling me her version of something, but I, yes. Self-serving? Would you agree? Self-serving? I'm going to object to an opinion. That'll be sustained. 
uh, her demeanor was uh, it surprised you a little bit? I'm an objective relevant. Overruled. Um, I don't know if I could say it surprised me. Um, as an officer, we kind of have to be ready to encounter whatever we're going to encounter in the situation. Um, it, it, uh, I guess as opposed to surprising me, it raised flags that I, um, needed to investigate the situation a lot more. Okay. So based on your interaction with her, Katrina's response and her the way she was acting raised red flags to you, correct? Yes, about the situation, yes. Okay. But you had never met Katrina before that night, correct? Correct. Nor had you ever met Jose before, correct? Correct. I'll pass a witness at this time. Um, Officer Cahill, you just talked about um, Katrina and how you didn't believe she was being authentic. Did you believe that Jose was being authentic? No, I believe they were both fine. Um, Your Honor, I would object to opinion and hearsay. And ask, the, uh, ask for a ruling on my objection and that the jury be instructed to disregard. Judge, I believe she opened the door. All right, can parties approach? All right, the objection is sustained. Ladies and gentlemen, you're to disregard that last answer. All right, state. Thank you, Judge. Officer Cahill, did Jose show any concern for Mercedes? I don't believe so. Different to ask you questions about um, Katrina having a conversation with Jose. Um, I believe you've already answered this, but what was Katrina's demeanor during that phone conversation? Um, so she started off by um, basically trying to follow what I was asking her to do to have the child brought to the hospital. Um, there was a discussion about the phone. And as soon as the discussion about- Your Honor, I would object to the hearsay Sustained. Um, at one point, Excuse me. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> once an objection is made, I'll make a rule. I'll make a ruling. If you don't understand my ruling, just let me know. I sustain the objection. So they're going to ask you another question. Judge, can we approach? No. Ask your next question. Well, Judge, at this time, I believe defense by talking about um, the phone conversation between Katrina and Jose has opened the door and we'd like to re-offer state's exhibit five under excited utterance. All right, that objection will be, well, I'm sorry, do you have any objection to that? Yes, I do have an objection to that because um, I, I don't believe that door has been opened. I don't believe that kind of thing that could open the door. All right, outside of the door not being opened, which is what you're saying, what are your other objections or do you have other objections? Yes, I have other objections. First of all, I didn't ask about the contents of the conversation, just the, her demeanor. Um, so I want to be clear about that. And um, I believe it's hearsay, irrelevant, and prejudicial. All right. The objection to hearsay will be sustained. I'll pass the witness. Nothing further, Your Honor. Is this witness excused or subject to recall? He's excused from the state. Subject to and right. the rule has been invoked. What that means is you can't discuss your testimony with anyone. You're not allowed to view anything. One of the parties may call you back, so make sure you're available. And and judge, he is an out, out of he lives out of state. Right. So one of the wit one of the parties may call you back. Make sure you're available. All right. Thank you. Call your next witness. State calls Julie Romo.
All right, if you'll take a seat here, please. To raise your right hand for me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. Julie Rummel. All right, make sure you keep your voice up so that the members of the jury and the court reporter can hear. Yes. State. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Rummel. Good afternoon. Can you please spell your last name for the court reporter? R U M M E L. How are you currently employed? I'm uh, employed with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice as a captain. Well, what do you do? Um, I run a shift, run a unit in Hondo, Texas. How long have you been doing that? I started in 2011, left for Child Protective Services, and then came back in August of 2022. So you said you left for Child Protective Services, correct? Yes, uh, how long did you work with Child Protective Services? Uh, I believe two and a half years. Um, is that Were you working with Child Protective Services in February of 2022? Yes, ma'am. What were your duties back then? Um, I would investigate all cases. I was on the night unit. We'd be working from Tuesday through Friday from 1 p.m. to midnight. Uh, and we, I would investigate all the cases that came in that I was assigned by my supervisor. Um, how did those cases, like how did the case come into CPS to the point you're gonna send an investigator? Uh, it depends. Uh, the hospital would call in the case, law enforcement or concerned citizens. Um, what kind of steps did you, or what things do you do as a CPS investigator? As a CPS investigator, I would investigate all types of cases from uh, neglect all the way up to child fatalities. How would you, do you go about investigating kind of like police officers do? Like what steps do you take to investigate? Uh, first, I would interview uh, family members, friends, close to the family, uh, collaterals, which we would uh, which our friends, contacts of the family would give us, and also uh, make sure the children were safe. Um, and during your time um, as an investigator, you said that you worked kind of like a shift that left, like all kind of like afternoon and evening up till midnight. That's correct, ma'am. Um, back on February 7th, 2022, uh, were you sent uh, anywhere regarding a child by the name of Mercedes Lasoya? I was, I, sent, I was sent to a hospital. I can't remember the name of the hospital though. Okay. Does Texas Vista sound familiar? Yes. Okay. And is that here in San Antonio? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, do you know if that hospital is still operating? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so when you were dispatched, uh, were you told what kind of call it was or? I was informed it was a child fatality. What happened when you first got to the hospital? Who did you first make contact with? I first made contact with, uh, I believe, the officer and that was watching over Jordan, the sibling of Mercedes. And then I made contact with the medical personnel as well to find out uh, the logistics of everything that occurred. That way I can contact my supervisor. Okay. And kind of what's the purpose of kind of getting all that initial information from people? Um, in a case like that, it was to meet with the district attorney so we could file for a removal of Jordan from the mother. Um, so at that night, uh, did you also see Mercedes? I did. Did you see her before or after you spoke to her sister, Jordan? After. So when you came in, uh, do you know about what time you got to the hospital? Was it late at night? I know it was evening time and it was already dark, but I don't know exactly what time. Um, what was your primary purpose for being at the hospital that night? My primary purpose was to ensure that Jordan was safe that night. Um, when you made contact uh, with Jordan, uh, was she there at the hospital? She was. Um, what types of things do you do when talking to a child like Jordan to make sure they're okay? Um, I talk to them. I get down on their level to make sure that they feel safe and secure with me first before uh, we take any further steps. Because if they don't feel safe and secure with us, then uh, you know they might be more hesitant to go with us. Uh, I ensured that she was doing okay and she was uh, seen by medical personnel as well. Um. 
How long were you able to talk to Jordan that night? I don't recall. Okay. Um, do you recall how old she was? I want to say about six, if I recall correctly. What was her demeanor at that point when you talked to her? Um, she was still her happy self. She wasn't aware of anything that occurred yet. Um, so she was still happy, very talkative. Uh, we made sure we got her some food and made sure she ate that evening and then, you know, got her in a safe place that night. Um, did you or the medical personnel inspect her for injuries? Yes. Um, did she have any injuries that you observed? No, not that I observed. Um, how did she present in terms of clothing and appearance? She appeared clean from what I remember. Uh, she, I believe the hospital gave her a stuffed animal if I remember correctly. But as far as her demeanor, she was well-nourished and clean. And you said that at some point that night, you also uh, viewed Miss Baby's body, correct? I did. Um, may I approach, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, so you have already been marked and admitted as State Exhibit 3. Um, is this Mercedes in that photo? Yes. Okay, and is this how she appeared when you were viewing her in the hospital that night? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit number seven. Um, do you recognize the two girls in this photograph? Yes, that's Mercedes and Jordan. Um, is this a fair and accurate representation of what Jordan especially looked like back then? Yes, ma'am. And you recognize both children? Yes, ma'am. They would offer State Exhibit seven into evidence. Thank you. No objection, Your Honor. State's Exhibit number seven is admitted. Permission to publish, Your Honor. Granted. So the girl on the left, that's, who's that? That's Jordan. Okay. And then the girl in the middle, who's that? That's Mercedes. Is Jordan older or younger than Mercedes? She's oh, older. She's older. Do you know by how much? I want to say give or take two years. Um. And you said that she, at that point, did not know what had happened to her sister. That's correct. Let me turn off the slit so it's not blaring everybody. Um, when you went in and saw Mercedes, what was the condition of her body? Uh, it was very bruised, teeth missing, toenails missing. Uh, there were little like thumbtack wounds on the bottom of her feet as well. Uh, clumps of hair missing. Uh, it was very, very bad. Would it be safe to say those were extensive injuries? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was there anybody else from CPS with you that night? There was, it was Special Investigator Anthony Adame. And was he doing the investigation with you? Yes, we were running it together. Um, and did, which one of you ended up being the primary investigator on the case? Uh, I guess I would. I was the one that would have to close out the case and everything. But you two worked together, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. And was he also in the room uh, with you when you interviewed Jordan? I don't recall. Was he in the room with you when you observed Mercedes? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you guys have to take photographs of Mercedes? Yes, ma'am. And were you in the room when those photographs were taken? I was the one taking the photographs. Okay. Do you remember, um, do you speak to anybody else that night about what had happened? Did you speak to Katrina or Jose or anyone else that night? I believe I spoke to her dad, if I remember correctly, and her stepmom outside of the hospital. Katrina's dad and stepmom? Yes. Or? Okay. What was the next step in the investigation you guys did? Uh, we filed for the removal of Jordan. I placed her in a home and then set Jordan up for a forensic interview. 
So tell the jury what a forensic interview is. A forensic interview is uh, conducted at Child Safe, where there's special uh, interviewers that know exactly what questions to ask uh, regarding severe cases, uh, one similar like this. So it's conducted by a, a different person, the one who does the interviewing. That's correct, ma'am. Uh, are you guys in the room when the kids are interviewed? No, ma'am. Okay. How? What do you guys do uh, uh, during the interview? We're watching over a video, uh, kind of like a Zoom, but it's just a video from one room to the other. And what is Child Safe? Child Safe is a place where they conduct interviews with uh, any anywhere from ranging from a sexual abuse case to child fatality case. Uh, more severe cases where an investigator with CPS would not be conducting the interview. Um, is, to your knowledge, is Child Safe um, an investigative entity or is it more neutral? Uh, it's neutral. And so you said that you got Jordan scheduled for a forensic, correct? Correct, ma'am. Um, do you recall when that interview took place? I do not. Okay. Would it have been in the next day or so after this? That's correct. Okay. Um, after you arrived at the hospital and spoke to Jordan, uh, did Jordan have any further contact with her mother or with Jose Ruiz? She did not. So she was removed immediately that night? Yes, ma'am. And immediately placed in CPS's care? That's correct, ma'am. After the forensic interview, um, you said you watched it, correct? Yeah, that's correct, ma'am. Okay. What is the next step that you took? Uh, we were trying to find family members that would have been suitable to place Jordan in and continue to ensure that she was safe where she placed, where she was placed. Um, do you recall if you went anywhere else as part of your investigation to anyone's house or apartment? I did go to a couple family members' house and then where she was placed with her, I want to say her great, great aunt. I went to her house and conducted a interviews with her and her mother, I believe, to ensure that was gonna be safe, took pictures of the home. And then we got that process so we could place Jordan with a family member. Uh, at any point in time, did you go uh, to someone's house by the name of Jeanette? Yes, that's correct. Uh, who was Jeanette? Jeanette was the friend of Katrina in the same apartment complex where they, uh, where they end up rushing Mercedes to the hospital from that apartment, saying, saying that she fell in that apartment. And so what's the purpose of going to Jeanette's apartment? Trying to locate an additional source of who last saw Mercedes alive. Um, were you ever able to speak to Katrina? Uh, we spoke to her, Mr. Adame and I both spoke to her briefly uh, before before she was arrested, I believe, at SAPD headquarters. When you spoke to her, uh, what was her demeanor? Uh, she was still calm and asking when she could see Jordan. Did she seem more concerned with Jordan than Mercedes? That's correct, ma'am. Did you ever speak to Jose at all? I did not. Okay. Do you know if uh, your partner, Mr. Adame, did? I believe he did. After, you know, this situation and Jordan got removed, did you follow Jordan and kind of like her whereabouts after this? I did all the way, I believe, for another three or four months afterwards. Um, were you invested or is that normal uh, to kind of keep up with? Uh, I think I was personally invested as well to make sure she was doing safe, especially after that traumatic incident. Uh, because I, you know, me and Mr. Adami did have to inform her that her sister passed. Okay. So you and Mr. Adami were the ones that had to tell her that Mercedes had passed. Yes, ma'am. We did that right before her child safe interview. Um, did you observe her emotional state after? I did. She, you? she came and gave me a big hug and, you know, mentioned something that her sissy was no longer in pain and walking the golden streets. So she I'm sorry, knew. I didn't understand that. What did you say? 
uh, Jordan stated that her sissy's no longer in pain and walked in the golden streets. Pass the witness. Defense. Good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Teresa Conley. Uh, I believe you said you were called dis dispatched is the word the state used dispatched for a child fatality. Correct, ma'am. Okay, and what was your result of that? Indeed, there was a child fatality. Is that correct? Yes, there was a child fatality, ma'am. Do you make any recommendations as to charging? As far as charging the crime? No, ma'am. Had you ever met Mercedes before this incident? No, ma'am. Were you familiar with the situation there? No, I was not. You made a comment, I believe, that Jordan, subsequent to the visit at the hospital, was her happy self. Yes, ma'am. How would you know it was her happy self? Uh, just because afterwards, from what I observed of her demeanor uh, throughout the whole investigation, the next three or four months. So it was a retrospective analysis rather than a, at the time. Correct, ma'am. Thank you. And you, I believe you said that Jordan was three years older, in your opinion? Uh, two. Two? Yes. Now, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I can make mistakes when I hear, um, you said that she did not know what happened. That's correct. You believe that? Um, why did she not know? Did you ask her at the time what happened? Object speculation. Overruled. Uh, I could not disclose any of the incident yet because she had to be uh, interviewed by Child Safe. So, but at that that particular night at the hospital, you did not interview Jordan. That's correct. I did not. I'm sorry because you had said that you interviewed Jordan. So. That's the uh, that's the steps we take in the interview process. But regarding a severe case like this, we weren't allowed to interview. All right, thank you. You did take photos, though. Correct. And you spoke with the dad and stepmom of Katrina. Yes, I believe okay. so. If I recall correctly. And was that probably to find out if they could take Jordan? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now you set up the child the forensic interview at Child Safe. Were you the one who took her to Child Safe? I was. And did you watch the interview? I did. And what did, how did she begin the interview with what happened that day? I'm going to object to hearsay. Sustained. I'd like to show the video. Do you want to introduce it? Yeah, Your Honor, I'd like to introduce the video of the Child Safe interview. Is there going to be any objection? Not from the state, Your Honor. All right, then, if you'll mark it as an exhibit. This, I guess, would be Defense Exhibit 1, but we're not allowed to have it, right? No. The state is saying that they're not objecting. But we're not allowed to have a copy of it. Well, it'll be in the it'll court's in possession. In evidence. Should I have it marked as D1 or State's 1? It doesn't state's matter. State's 1. But that's 1. Yeah, it, it, it's Defense 1. Thank you. I'll post it then. Here you go. Let me put this on there. Thank you. Can I have it? I need the desk. Oh, she's, I don't know, she took it. Did they take it? Yeah, Teresa, I need it so I can cover it. All right, so here's my question. Defense is offering defense exhibit number one into evidence. Any objections to defense exhibit number one? No, you're on. And are both parties saying that defense exhibit number one is the child safe statement of Jordan? Yes, Your Honor. All right, then defense exhibit number one is admit, admitted without objection. Do you want us to publish it? Please. Two or more. Okay. 
ya kan. I'm like, oh, I'm playing. She can play it. Okay. Now, yeah. Okay. If you want us to stop it, just like, no. if you want to stop it at any point, just like, I will. I just only heard the point with the actual explanation of what happened. I'm going to fast forward a little. Yeah. This goes on for about 10 minutes before they actually get into the stories. Bring it up. The child sits in the chair. Yeah, I'm getting it to fortune speed. It's getting talks about trivia to get her used to where she is. I'm going to object to she's putting facts not in the sustained. Evidence. Thank you. And so the cameras are here to help us remember the things that you want to fast forward a little. How old are you, Jordan? Six. Six years old? And when's your birthday? June the second. Do you know what year you were born in? <laughs> That's okay. Today, if I ask you something that you don't know, it's okay for you to tell me that you don't know by using your words. Okay? And that way I can understand. Now you and I have never met before. <laughs> tell me some things about yourself, Jordan. <laughs> I love coloring. Okay. I love painting. Okay. And I love coloring, painting, and drawing. Okay. I love to color with different color markers. Okay. And I love cake. Cake, okay. And I love the pie. You said the pie? The park. The park, okay. Because it's a drive and it's monkey bar. Tell me all about the park looks like. There's a monkey bar mm -hmm. and a drive and a swing. Okay. And um, there's a slide. There's a slide. Tell me about what shape this slide is. Uh, it could be triangle. Okay. A straight. Okay. Or this way, or this way, or this way, or this way. Okay. Now you said that you like to, that you like to color, you like to draw. Tell me about the things that you like to draw. Uh, I love unicorns. Okay. And I love the Okay. Um, unicorns, but not unicorns. Unicorns. What do you like most about unicorns? They have wings. You know what that's called? That's okay. All right. You said that you like to paint. Yeah. Tell me about the thing that you like to paint. Um, dinosaur. Dinosaur, tell me about the last thing that you painted. Um, a pumpkin. A pumpkin. Tell me all about the pumpkin look like. It looks uh, like orange and they had a brown stick. Okay. And I colored it, I painted it all orange and all uh, brown. Okay, and where were you at when you painted the pumpkin? Uh, at Hatchet. At Hatchet? Help me understand what that place is. It's a uh, school. School, okay. And what grade are you in? Fifth. First 
Great. Tell me more about hatchets. Um, you get to you get to go to bed and all that, and you go to yeah, and you get to go to the pond. Okay. Now, when you say STEM, help me understand what that means. That means you can uh, do it, uh, activities. Tell me about the activities. You can play with that. You can make little mouses and you can chase them. Make little mouses and you can chase them. Tell me all about the ways to make the mouses. Like, you put a machine in it. Okay. And then it goes. This way or this way or that. Okay. Well, thank you for telling me some things about yourself, okay? And some of the things that you like to do for fun and also about your school, okay? Now, I want to know a little bit about your day today, okay? So tell me everything that you did today from the time that you woke up this morning up to the time that you got here to this place, okay? Just everything you remember, step by step. I need to be you ate six then? Okay. Oh, what's the first thing you did after you woke up? Um, went to the restroom and took a shower and brushed my teeth. Okay, you went to the restroom, took a shower, you brushed your teeth, and then what happened? And then I got my clothes off, and then I put in my shoes on. And then what happened? And then I went to go eat a bed, and then I went to go cuddle. Tell me everything you had to eat before you went to go cuddle. I ate cereal, okay. and then I ate corn dogs and some Dutch fries. Okay. And then what happened? And then I cut kids. Okay. Now tell me about the place that you were at earlier today when you had the breakfast and you had the corn dogs there. At uh, uh, the French house. The French house? Help me understand what you mean by French house. Like, you know that lady that broke Mm -hmm. Our friend's house? Okay, do you know the name of the lady that brought you here today? No. Okay. And tell me everyone that came with you here today. The lady. Tell me everything about the way that the lady brought you here today. Uh, tell me all about the car looks like. It looks like gray, the top looks gray, and the bottom looks black. Okay. And then and then the seats are like this color. Okay. Now tell me everything that you did on the drive here today. She stayed with my stuffed animal. Okay. Tell me everything that you could see on the drive here today. The sky and trees and okay. grass. Tell me everything that you could hear on the drive here today. Like roads. Like roads? And cars. Did you hear anything else besides the roads and the cars? I the music. Oh, I the music. Did you hear? Disney music. Disney music, okay. Now, what's the first thing that happened when you got here to this place? I went over there in that room. Okay. Well, thank you for telling me about your day and about you coming here today, okay? Today, I'm going to ask a lot of important questions, okay? And I'm going to need you to answer them just like you did right now, okay? Just everything that you remember, step by step, from start to finish, okay? Now, today, if I ask something that you don't understand, it's okay for you to tell me that there's something you don't understand, okay? And that, that way, I can ask it in a different way or in a better way, okay? Now, also, if I get something wrong or I make a mistake, it's very important that you tell me that way I can fix it. Okay? Now, also, too, if I ask you something that you don't know or that you don't remember, it's okay for you to tell me if there's something that you don't know or something you don't remember. Okay? I don't want you to guess. But if there's something that you do know and that you do remember, it's very important that we do talk about it. Okay? Because here in this place, we talk about <clears throat> things that have happened, we talk about things that are real, we talk about the truth, okay? What does it mean to tell the truth? I don't know. And what does it mean to tell a lie? Okay. Now, what color is the same? 
Now, what color is my mask? Black. Okay. If someone were to say that this paper here is black, would that be the truth or a lie? Black. And how many chairs are in this room? Two. If someone were to say there's two chairs in this room, would that be the truth or a lie? The truth. What can happen to people that tell the truth? Because they make good decisions. What can happen to people that tell a lie? They make bad decisions. Now, while you and I talk today, do you promise to talk only about the truth? Yes. Is that a yes or no? Yes. Okay. Um, Jordan, tell me the reason that you're here today. Talk to, to talk to me? Tell me more about it. Um, they tell you about this. Tell me more about that. Um, I talk to boys. Yes, I talk to boys and girls. I talk to kids about things that have happened. Okay, has something happened that you're here today? No. Okay. Are you worried about something that might have happened? My sister. Your sister. Tell me everything you're worried about. Um, I miss my sister. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about your sister. She ate a lot of food. Okay. And then that's how she got sick. Tell me everything about the way that she got sick. She got sick from eating yogurt, three yogurt. And she ate bananas, squished up, and soup. Okay. And then she only drank water. What helps you know that she that she got sick? Because my mom was feeding me, and then she stuffed the spoon in her mouth, and then she accidentally struck it right here, and and then my mom uh pulled it out, and then she fell on the floor and she had head on the metal thing. Now is this something that you saw, something that you heard, or something else? Okay. Now uh, tell me, you, see, you said your mom was feeding her? Okay. Tell me everything that happened step by step. Just how we practiced earlier about your, you coming here in your day, okay? Tell me everything that happened. My mom was feeding her, and then she hit her head on the light bulb, and then was made. Okay, then what happened? And then she fell on the floor, and then she hit her head, and then she went to the hospital, and then uh, her friend took me to her house. Okay. So her friend took you to her house, and then what happened? And then I stayed there, and then I went to the hospital with her mom, and I never saw my mom again. What's your mom's name? Thank you very much. Yeah. Just for the record, I have stopped the video. Ms. Rommel, um, is, is that how you recall it, what we just saw? The interview? Yes. Yes. Was anything done about the fact that she said the mother was shoving a spoon down the child's throat? Was anything done about speculation. that? Okay, so well, I'm you can answer if you know. All right, so here's the thing. When an objection is made, I will respond to the objection. That's what I'm here for. No sidebars. You can answer the question if you know the answer. I didn't. She was already. I, my main goal was to remove Jordan at that night. Your main goal was what? To remove Jordan that night to make sure she was safe. But she said in this interview that an action was taken against Mercedes by her mother. Did you do anything about that? I'm not the one to charge any parents. The answer is no? That's correct. Did you report it to anybody? 
Yes, it was in my investigation. Do you have it there with you? No, I don't. Prior to this interview that you took Jordan to, did you interview files on this family? I believe I looked at some of the history before going out. And what do you recall about some of the history? Uh, there was an open investigation because they could not locate the family. They couldn't locate the family. Who was in charge of that investigation? I don't recall, ma'am. But that wasn't your role? That was not. Do you check on any history with your department about Jose on how Luis? Uh, we run history on both involved parties prior to going out to a call. It's true there was nothing on Jose on how in relation to this family. Is that correct? I don't recall, ma'am. Was there anything in your recollection about Jose on Hell Ruiz anywhere in your records? I don't recall. Did you look? Yes, we look into every in, every involved family member, or that to be the case of being called on by Jay Mental. You did know you were coming here today and that Jose on Hell Ruiz is the person at the defense table. Can I object to argumentative? Sustained. You didn't make any effort then to look into Jose on help before you came here today. Objection to argumentative. Overruled. You can answer that question. No, ma'am, because I'm no longer employed with CPS. So I have no oh, I'm sorry. factors. Thank you. I'm sorry, and what did you say you're doing now? I work for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I'm a captain at the Torres Unit in Hondo. Thank you. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Thank you, Judge. Um, so I'm going to play the rest of this interview that's already been admitted. But before I do, just a few questions. CPS, that's not an, arrest, an arresting agency, correct? That's correct. Okay. Whose job in this case would that have been? The San Antonio Police Department. Okay. And they also observed the interview with Jordan. Correct. I believe so. I'm just going to play the rest of the interview now. Now, Marie, you said, uh, tell me your sister's name. Nathan. Mercedes, huh? How old is it? Five. Five? Okay. I want to go back to when you said that your mom was, was feeding her. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell me everything that happened before that. And then they uh, did bread, and my mom. My mom did a breath and my sister's mom. Your, your, they, you said they did a, a breath? They did that right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Breath. Tell me more about that. And I started uh, doing this on her stomach so that way she could, um, uh, like, the lab because she was not a uh, feeling Okay. And she was full on it. Tell me about the place that you were at at the time when that would happen. And uh, my mom's friend's house. Do you know that person's name? No. I don't know. Tell me everyone that was at your mom's friend's house. Uh, her little son and her that's it. Okay. Tell me everything you were doing at the time when they gave you the bread. Um, eating my food. Okay, help me understand who gave her bread. Uh, my mom. Your mom? Okay, tell me everything about the way she gave her bread. That she put in her mouth and her mouth, and then she gave her bread. Okay. Now tell me all about what your sister looked like when your mom was feeding her. Uh, she was on a chair. Okay. Tell me all about what her face looked like. Um, 
How many of you could feel when that happens? Um, I feel a little bit vague. Okay. Was there ever a time where you had any marks or bruises on your body from her slapping with her hand in the belt? No, only hand mark right Tell me all about the hand mark. Like it was big. Okay, now tell me everything that happened that time, okay? Step by step. Just let me practice. Like, my mom was hitting me because I asked for some socks.
Tell me everything you remember about that time, okay? I don't know what you Well, tell me everything that happened that time, step by step. Um, she was in the closet. Okay. And then she peed on herself and then she was dead. Then licked the pee and then she licked it and sneaked it. And then she smelled like pee and then her sister started putting stuff out. Okay, who was in the closet? I said the same. Okay, all right. And tell me more about the place that you were at at the time. Uh, Jose the Point. Okay, and where in Jose's apartment were you at at the time? Uh, tell me everyone that was in the room with that. My mom had me on the same. Okay, tell me everything that your mom was doing when uh, Mercedes was in the closet. Mm -hmm. Well, she told that, and my mom told her that to stop. Okay. Tell me everything that you were doing when your mom told him to stop. She was putting thumb tags, blowing like thumb tags, and putting them in her feet again. Tell me all about the way that he was putting thumb tags in her feet. So, she was pushing them through to her skin. Okay. Tell me all about what the thumbtacks thumb look like. Like, they were round and then, uh, like, circles and then a pointy thing at the bottom. A pointy thing at the bottom? Tell me all about the way that Mercedes' body was positioned when he did that. On the snow. Okay, was, was she sitting down? Was she laying down or something else at the time? Laying down. Lay down, tell me more about it. Um, I don't know what you mean. Okay. She said she was laying down. Um, and earlier you said that that, that she peed. And uh, that Jose told her to lick the pee. Did I hear that right or wrong? Right. Tell me more about that. She put, like he said, to put your face in. Okay, and then, and then what was the very next thing that happened after you said that? Uh, she took a shower, okay. and then she put it some weight to the top. That tell me everything that you could hear while that was happening. Um, I heard the screaming. Tell me more about the screaming. Um, I don't know what you mean. Tell me everything that told you to say who was screaming. I said, I'm here. Everything that you could see while that was happening. And I was in the living room, so I didn't really see much. Tell me everything that, that, that you remember that you could see. Um, my sister laying down on the floor uh, in the back. I laid up and my sister say no. Okay. And then tell me everything that happened after that. Uh, she started slashing her feet. Okay. I, I don't know what she did. She was slashing her feet and then what happened? And I'm going to do it and I got some shoes on because I was about to Okay. How old were you at the time? At that time? Um, I was five and my sister was four. And then uh, she started turning five and then I was six. Uh, tell me everything that Jose was doing when he uh, told her to uh, to be. I don't know what she did. Okay. Was there ever a time where you saw something else happen to your sister? You saw that? Um, she was in the doctor. And there was a cop anyway. And then one of the cops took me into the room and then um, and then they gave me medicine because the doctor said it was hurting. Okay. So the 
back of your neck was the hurting. Yeah. Tell me everything about how come it was hurting. I couldn't swallow. Now, has someone else ever ever hit you besides your mom? Have you ever been hit with anything else besides the bell and a hand? A chakra. Tell me more about that. There was a blue big chakra and a blue big bell, like a small bell that I have in my Okay. Tell me all about the chakra, I look like. Um, it looks like blue and uh, nice. Earlier you said that your mom, um, that your mom spanked you with the belts. What part of the belt was she spanked? Like the first part. She was she put it in half, and then she started walking. She put it on half, and she started. Okay. Tell me all about where the belt came from. Uh. Like she started uh, going 
don't know what to do. Okay. And tell me how his body was positioned when he looked over the belt. Straight. Straight? Tell me everyone that was there at the time. My mom, my husband, and my sister. Tell me everything your mom was doing when he uh, looked over the belt. Sitting on the bed watching TV. Okay. And tell me again, well, where on where on her body he went from? On her butt. Okay. Did he whoop her on any other part of her body besides her butt? Right here. I'm sorry? Right here. Okay. Then what was the, did he say anything at the time when he did that? No. Okay. Well, was there anything that happened after he whooped? Um, I don't know. Was there a time where you saw him whip her in a different way? No. Okay. Was there ever a time where you where you saw him where you saw him say whip your sister with uh, something different besides the belt? Uh, I talked about when so, my mom was in bed. Tell me about that. My mom was in bed, and she was at work. And her started whooping. Okay. Tell me all about the way he was whipping her that time. Um, I don't really know. That's all I know <laughs> because Jose, I was with my mom at the meeting. You're with your mom at the meeting? <laughs> Tell me understand what meeting. Um it's like a job for computers. A job. Okay. And what else you know that Jose um, whipped your sister with the chunk? Um, but I know it was a big chunk. Okay. Was there ever a time where he whipped her with anything else besides the dog and chunk? No. Was there ever a time where you saw him do something different to um, your sister besides work yeah. and putting the subtext in the video? No. Okay. Do you know if he had done something to someone else? No. Okay. Have you ever seen someone else get whooped? No. Have you ever seen someone else whoop your sister? And um, tell me everything about the place where that happened when you said that he that they whooped your sister. Uh, I said a Was there ever a time where it happened at a different place? No. Was there ever a time where someone else saw it happen um, besides you? Um, my mom got pain. Tell me all about that. Like my grandpa and my uncle and my mama. <laughs> my uncle's dad tricks. Okay. Tell me everything they saw. If I ask to stop this, so I go out and stop joking. Yes. All right. We'll pause it. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard some evidence in this case. Yeah. You're not allowed to start uh, deliberating internally with yourself or each other. You're not allowed to do any investigation on this case. You're not allowed to view anything about this case. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? I'm going to give you all a break. We'll be back at 2.45. All right, Brother Jerry. Thank you.
All right, thank you. No, do you, um, all right, and we're bringing the jurors back in. Your Honor, before that, excuse me, uh, when I was out talking, Ms. Rummel was talking to somebody. I don't know who it was. I, I spoke with Brittany beforehand. I don't know if it was somebody that was talking. I don't know what they were talking about. Well, I have no idea. You all can ask whatever questions you want to ask on the witness stand. Okay. You just, I mean, we know who it was. It was just about getting her set up for a pretrial in another case. It was That's somebody fine. from our office. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. I won't, I won't bring it up. Okay. No, we're not. You're in, concentrating on your picture, you and Lorraine on the TV. And they called you the murderer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just tell that girl. Thank you, Lorraine. Kara has the jury list. I don't want to have any. What? It's not allowed. Hmm? Yes. All right for the jury. All right, please be seated. Uh, State, you may continue. Thank you, Judge. And it's from the before I begin replaying the or playing the video again. Um, how many different places did you observe Jordan pointing out were bloody on Mercedes face? It's objection, Your Honor. It's been shown. It's not necessary for the witness to contem contemplate on what you, we've all seen. Got to be overruled. Probably five or six places on her face. I'm going to continue playing. Yes. Okay. Your mom will be Mercedes. Your mom will be Mercedes. Okay. All right. Now my grandpa calls me, says, um, my grandpa calls me so really like my mom. Okay. Okay. Because oh. she got CPS. Okay. And who's she? Um, Priscilla. Priscilla? Okay. Jordan, I'm going to go ahead and step out of the room real quick, okay? Mm -hmm. To see if I have any more questions to ask you. I'll be right back. It won't take me long, okay? Now, I do have some markers right here underneath the table, okay? They're right here. Would you like to color on the paper? Okay. All the markers are right here. You can take them out if you want, okay? You can color. I'll be right back. Fast forward a little. So he returns to the room. Yeah, 
Number white. She's a little Next one. I have it here. I'm not real, but I know it's a little bit. I'm going to ask you all going to resume playing timestamp 6.06 p.m. I don't think this is a deception. I just have a couple more questions to ask. You can continue coloring if you want. Okay. I'm going to put them here, okay? All right. I just have a couple more questions to ask, okay? I want to go back to earlier, uh, Georgia, when you said that um, you said your mom, you said your sister was sick and your mom was feeding your, your sister, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, you said that your mom put um, the spoon in your sister's mouth. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where you saw someone else put something in your sister's mouth? No. Okay. Was there ever a time where your mom put something else in your sister's mouth besides the spoon? No. But my mom did uh, shove the spoon up to right Tell me more about that. She ate noodles and she kept spreading me out because she didn't like them and my mom kept uh, pushing it in and these, and these two teeth were gone already. Who is, um, okay. You said the, the teeth were gone. Tell me more about the, the teeth being gone. Um, Last time, Jose put in my sister's mouth and slapped him, and these two teeth came out. Tell me all about the way he slapped her. Like this. What helps you know that he slapped her? Because I saw her. Tell me everything you can see when that happened. Um, and my slapped her. Okay. Tell me everything he slapped her with. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What did he use to slap? Uh, his hand. And he has rings, golden rings. And he has a golden chain. Okay. And tell me how his hand was when he slapped her. Like this. And tell me everywhere that he slapped. I said I Okay. And okay. Tell me um, everything that you can hear. Slapped her. Yes. Tell me everything that was happening at the time when you slapped her. She was crying. Okay. Tell me everyone that was there. My mom and Jose. Okay. They're always there. You said your mom was there. They're always there. Tell me everything your mom was doing when you slapped her. Um. I don't know because. See, my mom saw it, and I only saw a little bit. You said you only saw a little bit, and your mom saw it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What helps you know that your mom saw it? Um, last time I was in there, and she was watching Jose. Okay. And, um... Jose, um, Jose and his sister, my sister started buying him. And she, and my sister Mercedes always bites me. And she bites my mom. Where were you at at the time when you said that he, uh, that he slapped her? Um, in the room. In the room? In which room were you at? At, uh, uh, Okay. And tell me everything. Tell me all about what your sister looked like when he slapped her. Um, he, she was on the bed, laid down, and he always stares her with the when it's nighttime and then with that camera. With the camera? It has a little camera. Tell me all about the way he stares. Uh, he goes high, and he's scared. Tell me what the camera looks like. It's like long, and then square, and then square. Okay. Yes. And help me understand where the camera is located at. Um, everywhere. Everywhere? Like, in the room, 
I know it's a little small on the video, um, but when Jordan was asked to show uh, what his hand looked like when he hit Mercedes, were you able to see it? Yeah, she had an open palm. Pass the witness. Defense. Thank you. How long, um, Ms. Romo, how long after 
this incident, did you leave CPS many months or weeks or? That was February. It was in February of 2022. Uh, I went on um, leave in May of 22. The same year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and up until that time, what actions did you take in regard to what you had just seen? I continued to investigate the case and let uh, SAP... I'm sorry, did you say you cleared the case? I continued to investigate the case and I let SPD, SAPD take over the criminal side of the case. Okay, now, apparently we've heard a couple couple of comments about CPS being called. Did you ever find out how many times CPS was called on Katrina? I know it was a handful, but I don't know the exact amount from looking into the case. And since you had the time to look, how many cases were called on Jose Angel? That I don't remember, ma'am. You don't remember? No, ma'am. Did you ever bother to look? Uh, like I said previously, we do look into the cases before we go out on both parties involved. You're saying we, who is we? All of investigators. Before you go out to a case, you look at the both parties involved. So many people at CPS looked into this matter. Is that Not right? into this matter. I'm sorry? Not into this matter. I, I'm saying in general, on any case we get called out on, uh, the investigator will look into the parties involved. Specifically with this case, because that's why we're here. How many people looked into this case, if you know? I don't know. I know I did. You didn't? I did. You did, but you no. didn't check on Jose. Yes, I ran both backgrounds prior to going out to the case. But I don't remember in relevance to him. Isn't it true that you don't remember because there weren't any? I can't recall, ma'am. What did you look at before coming here today? I didn't really look at anything prior to coming here. Who did you speak with? I spoke with the district attorneys. District attorney, yes. Were the, was it the district attorneys that you see in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. When you took um, when you took Jordan from that social that child safe place, where did you take her? I don't recall, but if I would have to say back to the foster home where she was at. Was this a family member in this foster home or someone else? It was somebody else that night. It, the first night we removed her, she got placed in a group foster home and then placed her in a foster home, I believe within the next week, and then cleared the family with the following week. I'm sorry, what did you say about the family? Cleared a family member the following week. Thank you. Do you remember which family member? I don't remember. I wanna say it's Guadalupe. Excuse me? Guadalupe. Was she, uh, she's yeah. a was great, she the great, grandmother? Great of Excuse me, Jordan. excuse me. You cannot speak over each other. If you speak over each other, the court reporter cannot take it down. All right, ask your question. Guadalupe, do you remember her last name? I do not. Do you recall if it was uh, the grandmother? No, of, she's a great, great, I want to say another great aunt. A great aunt. It wasn't in the same house as the Homer people, was it? No, ma'am. And do you know if she's still there? Well, I do not know. Not because you're not there anymore. But the last time you were at CPS, was she at that home that was that particular aunt, Guadalupe? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to add to this that you that you found out from your uh, interviews that you didn't cover? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Here's the witness. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, is this witness excused or subject for recall? Excused from the state. Excused, Your Honor, completely. All right, the rule has been invoked. That means you cannot discuss your testimony with anyone or view anything. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state or the defense. 
Thank you. State call your next witness. The state calls Anthony Adamic. Thank you, ma'am. You take a seat here, please. All right, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. That's right. My name is Anthony Adami. All right, if you'll make sure you keep your voice up so that the members of the jury can hear and the court reporter can hear. Yes, Your Honor. State. Good afternoon, Mr. Adame. Um, how are you presently employed? I'm pre presently employed with the Department of Family and Protective Services, Child Protective Services. Okay, and what is your title there? I am a special investigator for the department. How do, so we just heard from Ms. Julie Rummel, who is no longer with the department. Um, how does your role differ from the role that she had? So my role is slightly different uh, than what we would call investigators. Special investigators are a specialized unit within the department. Our role consists of assisting investigations with high media cases, uh, child death investigations, any investigation involving uh, serious injuries such as skull fractures, broken bones, severe burns, anything complex uh, with that happens within the department, uh, they assign us to these cases to include uh, cases such as labor trafficking, uh, sex trafficking. Uh, we conduct investigations on our own employees. We conduct investigations with law enforcement and uh, we act as liaisons for law enforcement and, uh, and uh, all local law enforcement as well. Um, what kind of background um, do you have? And do you, well, do you have any background in law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have approximately six years in law enforcement. I was a police officer at Belton Police Department, located just north of uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, during my time frame with Belton Police Department, I was a patrol officer, then I uh, became a detective. While, uh, while my tenure of being a detective, I investigated crimes such as as high up as capital murder. Uh, I conducted several crimes against children, uh, those types of investigations. Uh, and then I also conducted investigations involving uh, child pornography. Uh, I also conducted investigations involving felony type cases such as theft, any kind of aggravated assault, any kind of sexual assault type cases. Uh, and then I kind of ended there shortly with uh, investigations into drug enforcement as well, also narcotics agents. Okay. So up until February, well, let me go back. Um, how long have you been with uh, DFPS as a special investigator? I've been with the department for approximately four years and just over two months. Okay. And where were you before that? Uh, at the Belton Police Department. Okay. So you went straight from law enforcement to be a special investigator with CBS. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you stated earlier that as a special investigator, you work with law enforcement. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, are you familiar with the case involving five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, how did you first become aware of the case? I was on call during this investigation, this particular investigation. I was called out by my supervisor uh, to 
respond to this child death investigation? And um, do you recall the date? I believe it was on February 7th, 2022. Okay. And where were you called out to? I was called out to the Texas Vista Medical Center, kind of south, south of town, south of downtown, okay. off of military ground. Do you, um, do you recall who was there when you arrived? When I arrived on scene, I observed uh, Officer Cahill. I observed uh, Detective Saez. Uh, the coworker that I was working with at that time, investigator Julie Rummel. Uh, and then I also went directly to where the child Mercedes Lasoya was at. And I briefly recall um, seeing Jordan Lasoya, her sister, okay. and then several medical personnel as well. Um, what was kind of the first step you did in your investigation? As a, my focus was geared towards the child death. When I first made contact, it was to make contact with the homicide detective, primarily involved in the case. I made contact with Detective Saez. After making contact with him, we entered the room where Mercedes Lasoya was lying on a, on a bed. Okay. Now, as a special investigator, you said that you, you do respond to, um, children who have been um, severely abused. Yes, ma'am. Uh, including children who are deceased. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the first step that you do when you get, you go to the scene and you see a deceased child? The first step that I would do is make contact with law enforcement. If they are not already there, we are contacting them there, but most of the time they are already there before we show up. First is having that communication with law enforcement because at times that we want to maintain that integrity of their investigation. So after making contact with Detective Sias this particular night, uh, I looked over to him. We we're standing right there next to Mercedes Basoya, and I asked, "Is it? Can I go ahead and work towards seeing the entire body of this child?" And what we were, I was conducting a body check for injuries. Uh, and anything that uh, indicated abuse or neglect. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to check for those things? Uh, because uh, any time in a child death, uh, uh, we want to look for all those injuries so that we can kind of list them and, and see the uh, intensity of each injury and what, what kind of led to that. And it kind of helps towards the investigative part, what happened, uh, how did these injuries occur for later on whenever I'm going to interview uh, the parents or individuals involved in that investigation. Okay. Um, so did you conduct the body check on Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you describe the injuries that you saw? Yes, ma'am. Starting from the bottom of her feet, um, at the bottom of her feet, she had red small dots. I would call them like pinpoints at the bottom of her feet. Uh, there were several of them. I counted more than 10 of them. Uh, on the bottom of her left toe, there was some kind of abrasion of some sort. On her left toe, particularly between her big toe and the toe right next to that, the toes in the middle, so her third and fourth one had no toenail there, and it appeared to be like there was some severe uh, injury to that area, uh, some abrasion of some sort. I don't know if that toe was ripped off or anything of that nature. Uh, going up on her right foot and left ankle, there was bruising. Going up her leg on the left side, of, on her left leg and her thigh, she had a pattern of marking. Uh, they looked kind of straight and going down her uh, left thigh. And they looked some kind of um, 
bruising pattern. Uh, she had severe bruises on both sides of her hips. Uh, I would say uh, about the size of my hand. Um, she had severe bruising on her buttock area. Uh, she had severe bruising kind of near her uh, lower back area. Uh, towards the center of her chest, there appeared to be some roots bruising there as well. Uh, her left nipple appeared to have uh, been really red and discolored. Uh, it was very different from her right nipple. Um, her neck had some uh, cuts and bruising as well. Uh, her mouth, uh, when I looked into her mouth, her teeth were discolored. And I observed uh, it looked like maybe a tooth was missing. Um, she had something underneath her chin, kind of like some, like hers, the skin of her underneath her, like kind of underneath her lid, uh, looked like something was there. I don't know how to describe it other than um, like it was just markings all over the bottom of her lid. She had a, uh, some cuts throughout her face, on her nose, kind of towards her forehead, uh, on her cheeks. Um, her hair on both sides of her hair, uh, on the top of her hair, she had some length of hair and it was in a ponytail. However, on the side of her hair, her hair was thinned out as if it, it had fallen um, or it was missing. Um, it wasn't like a haircut type, uh, like as you see on myself, it was more like bits and pieces kind of throughout her hair. Um, and I believe that's pretty much all the injuries that I've seen. Now. That was a foot to head and a toe to head. Um, oh, and, and I, I forgot to mention on her arms, she had bruising on her arms and particularly where her, <clears throat> her hands were at in this area right here, there was some pretty severe bruising as well. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes. It's ten through thirty-six. Yes, would be ten through thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Okay. What is eight? Can you explain it? I'm going to show you what's been labeled at this point for identification purposes. States exhibits 10 through 38. Can you look at those? And let me know if those are fair and accurate depictions of what you saw that night. Yes, ma'am. Do you know who took these photos? Uh, yes, ma'am. I had instructed uh, investigator Julie Rommel to take photographs. Some of these pictures, I can see my own hands in them. Uh, I was present and I instructed her to take photographs while I was helping maneuver the body with uh, medical personnel. Your Honor, I'd offer States Exhibits 10 through 38. No objection, Your Honor. All right, States Exhibits number 10 through 38 are admitted without objection. And why is it important for CPS to take photos? Uh, during our investigations, uh, we have to collect evidence for our own investigations, and it 
removes that element of uh, abuse and uh, physical abuse, neglect, those sort of things. So we can prove those later on in court if need be. So after these photos were taken, um, what was your next step? Next step was to uh, assist Julie Rummel, investigator Julie Rummel, in securing safety for the surviving sibling, which was Jordan, Jordan Lasoya. Um, we kind of parted ways in the investigation. Uh, Detective Sias had informed me that he would be conducting an interview on Katrina Mendoza and uh, Jose Ruiz at the police department downtown at headquarters. And I asked him if it may I be present during that investigation, and he granted me permission to do so. So I followed law enforcement to headquarters at San Antonio Police Department, and Julie Rummel continued on with uh, securing safety for Jordan Lasoya. Okay. Um, did you ever meet Jordan that day? I briefly saw her there at the hospital, but if I made direct, I, I did not make any direct uh, interaction with Jordan Lasoya at the hospital. So um, were you present when Jose Ruiz gave a statement to Detective Slice? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you at any time, were, were you in the room or were you in a different room? No, ma'am, I was in a different room, in a viewing room uh, while he was being interviewed by law enforcement. Okay. Um, did you at any time speak to Katrina Mendoza? I would speak to Katrina Mendoza later on that evening after she was done conducting her interview with law enforcement. Uh, when you met with Katrina without going into what she said, was she forthcoming with information? Yes, ma'am. How long did you speak with her? I spoke to her approximately two and a half hours to three hours. Now, um, The next day, um, did you continue in, an investigation the following day? Uh, I would continue the investigation, yes, ma'am. So what did you do next? Uh, the next step, I believe, was to assist with conducting a forensic interview for Jordan Lasoya. And what is the forensic interview? The forensic interview is a process uh, for Anytime that there is a, a major event that occurs, it is a place that we take children so they can conduct an interview with uh, experts for forensic interviewers. And uh, it's in a setting uh, that's safe for the children. And that's where we conduct those investigations. So it's in the process of making that happen. Do the, the interviewers, are they, um, do they have any kind of certification or? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the the interviewer in Jordan's case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what, what was his name? His first name is Sam. Uh, his last name, I may mess this up, Abrigo. But I, I know Sam, we've met each other and had several uh, interviews. So, yeah. And why is it important to put a child with a forensic interviewer as opposed to just interviewing them yourself? Uh, it's the point of it is so that we don't re-victimize that children over and over. Uh, they don't have to tell their story or the event to me, law enforcement, to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. They go to one place, they tell their story, it's recorded, it's audio recorded and video recorded. So it's one one time they tell their story, instead of sound, said telling it several times. But overall to prevent re-victimization. Okay. So other than, um, you said you went to headquarters and yes. you went to the forensic interview. Did you go to any other locations as part of this investigation? Yes, ma'am. Um, I learned that, that they had resided, that Katrina, Katrina um, Mendoza and her children, Mercedes Lasoya and uh, Jordan Lasoya had resided for a small period of time at the Henry B apartments off of Vance uh, Jackson. So one of the steps that I was taking was going back to that apartment to make contact with apartment management. Okay. 
And how recently have they resided at Henry V? Uh, very recent. I I mean, uh, at the <clears throat> I would say days, or within that week, they resided at Henry V apartment. The week of uh, Mercedes Lasoya's death. Um. So if if there had been some evidence put forward that um, it had been a month since Jose had seen the children, um, with, or had lived with them, um, would that make sense with the evidence that you got from this case? Yes, ma'am. Um, um, Did you find out, it, was Jose still living at that apartment? When I went to apartment management, they, I was advised that he was in the process of moving out and I learned that he had moved to a different apartment, but I don't believe they had completely cleared out of that apartment just yet. No. Do you know whose apartment it was? I believe, according to the apartment manager, the apartment was listed under Mr. Jose Ruiz. And when you were there, did you see evidence that um, children lived there? <laughs> when I went upstairs, um, I looked inside and it looked like it had been cleaned or there was a lot of stuff that was taken out. There was a couple of trash bags outside. And uh, when I go back, I don't recall anything that I seen such as toys or um, small clothing to indicate that children had been there. Okay, that's, and that's fine. Um, when you had gone there, and, and to be clear, um, did you go there on your own or did you go with anyone else? I went there initially on my own, um, following up on the information that was provided to me by uh, Katrina Mendoza during her interview. Um, when I made contact with apartment management there, they were like, yes, Mr. Jose Ruiz resided here. And then that's when they uh, provided me additional information. Uh, at that time, when I found out that uh, they did reside there at some point in time. I did contact homicide detective Saez uh, in reference to that uh, newfound information. Okay. Did you do any other investigation around um, the fact that they lived in those apartments? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I conducted what we call name surveys. And basically what that is, name and address surveys, it's uh, getting more information about what is happening in a particular location. Uh, I conducted this survey with San Antonio Police Department, and basically it is a list of uh, events or calls for service to that particular location. And I also, uh, uh, I, I also got in contact with a neighbor as well. Okay. Um, did you see any concerning calls that had been made out to that apartment? Uh, yes, ma'am. There were several disturbance calls and loud music calls, um, particularly the ones that were listed as disturbance. Uh, indicate, I believe one of them indicated that they heard some screaming. Um, which neighbor did you speak to? Uh, the couple's name is Gabriel and Gabriella I might mess up this last name, YouTube. Um, I had them come to uh, our one of our offices located on uh, Nacogdoches Street up in the north side of town. Um, and I conducted an interview with them. Um, without saying what they said, were they familiar with uh, Katrina Mendoza and Mercedes Square? Yes, ma'am. And Jose Ruiz. Yes, ma'am. Now, we talked about how you went up to the apartment and then you told size. Did you ever actually gain entry into the apartment? No, ma'am. Um, I looked, the window shades were all the way up. I kind of looked inside 
And then I called him and he advised that he's coming from downtown and he'll make his way uh, to the apartment. And I, I kind of, he said, he told me to kind of hang uh, tight there. Don't move, don't leave. And then he showed up uh, at the apartment. Did you go inside the apartment with him? No. Okay. Uh, he indicated that uh, he would be obtaining a search warrant. Uh, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. And just sharp. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's been labeled states eight and nine. These were left out of the the group that I showed you earlier. Um, yeah. Is that from the night that you saw Mercedes Lasoy at the hospital? Yes, ma'am. And is this a fair and accurate depiction of what she looked like at that day? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, may I publish these as well? Or, I'm sorry, may I, I'm going to offer state things of the eight and nine. Was it eight? I'm sorry, eight, eight and nine? Eight and nine. Thank you. I had and skipped them earlier. No objection, Your Honor. Eight and nine are admitted without objection. May I publish? Yes. Next question, please. Yeah, sorry, we're trying to get. Um, when you were, okay, so we have viewed the forensic interview with Jordan. Um, in that interview, um, she referred to thumbtacks. Um, was that something um, that was then deemed important in an investigation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when you went to the Henry B. Gonzalez apartments, did you observe, you didn't go inside, but did you observe any thumbtack? Yes, ma'am. Um, when I went towards the front door, outside of the front door, kind of on the wall to the left of the front door, there was a single thumbtack kind of uh, eye level, um, possibly about five, six or so. So I'd say just a little bit taller than me. So that's what I observed it. Um, did you see any anywhere else outside? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, you want to may I approach? Yes. Okay, I'm going to show you what's I'm labeling as state's exhibit. 39. This one? It's just the one photo. Thank you. What is this a photo of? Uh, thumbtack. Okay. Two thumbtacks. Are these the two thumbtacks that you observed? Yes, ma'am. I would offer state to give a 39. Any objection? No, Your Honor, no objection. State's Exhibit 39 is admitted without objection. Your Honor, may I publish? Yes. So at this point, you have speak you have spoken to Katrina at length. You have um, observed Jose, Jose's statement, you have observed Jordan's, and you have gone out to the Henry B. Gonzalez apartments. Um, what else did you do in your investigation? Uh, yes, ma'am. We went back to the original location where uh, Mercedes Lasoya, Jordan Lasoya, and Katrina Mendoza were residing at a new apartment uh, with, a, with a friend, Jeanette. Mendolia, 
Your last name is difficult okay. to pronounce. And um, did you speak to uh, Jeanette? Yes, ma'am. And was there anything uh, troubling about Jeanette? Yes, ma'am. What was troubling about her? The troubling nature was that she had observed some of these injuries to Mercedes Lasoya and that she did not report that to law enforcement or Child Protective Services or any other adult for that matter. And so what did you do with that? I instructed uh, inve investigator Julie Rummel that we should open up another investigation primarily on uh, Jeanette after we supervised or after we um, spoke with her supervisor, we called in a new intake and conducted an investigation on Jeanette as well. Okay. For, uh, alleged abuse and neglect. Okay. And um, did that investigation end in her, uh, in, in any kind of removal? I cannot recall at this time. Okay. Um, that's fair. Okay. So, um, at the end of this investigation, um, what do you do with your findings? Uh, I take my findings and I present that information to the investigator. Uh, the investigator this, uh, will take that information and will make a disposition with, uh, they'll also discuss that with their supervision and make an overall disposition, whether that's uh, reason to believe that neglect and abuse have occurred. And there's other dispositions as well. Uh, as part of your investigation, did you consult with other caseworkers that were knowledgeable of Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. And who were they? I consulted with uh, I consulted with Julie Rumble's supervisor at that time, Jeanette Salazar. Okay. I consulted with my supervisor, Robert Ruiz. Um, what about Heather Bryant? I did consult with Heather Bryant. Well, um, she was, yes, briefly, she was in one of our staffings. Um, are, are you aware which one of them was the last to see Mercedes? Yes, Heather Bryant was the last one to see Mercedes. And at that time, at, the, at, at that time, did Heather file any concerns about Mercedes? Um, I don't recall that. And and by by last time, I mean alive. Yes, a lot. Uh, do you know how recently that was to when she passed? I believe Heather had seen her in early or mid January. So I would say it was within a couple of weeks or so of her passing. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Defense, your honor. <laughs> Excuse me. Expert sister, I'm Priest of Common, Mr. Otome. Uh, Your Honor, it's 3.40. You had said that you wanted to close at 4 o'clock. No, we're continuing. I'm Ask going to your get question. at least an hour. Ask your questions. Mr. Adame, Teresa Common. I'm going to go backwards here. With all these, you're saying that that Miss Heather Bryant saw her a couple weeks before she died? I would say it's in that January. January 2022? She didn't observe bruises or anything? I can't recall what she wrote on her uh, observations, ma'am. You can't recall? I can't recall what she wrote on her observations. Well, we have old bruises on February 7th and hair pulled out. So what does CPS do about it then? If she would have made those observations, she would have made some kind of safety plan or safety intervention, man. What did CPS do about the bruises that were there prior to February 7th? 
What did you do to save this child? Uh, Ma'am. Uh, uh, objects, um, speculation, lack of personal knowledge, argumentative. Yeah. All right, counsel lay the foundation for his ability to answer that question. So January of 2021, somebody from your department, this Heather Bryant, interviewed Mercedes. To your knowledge, did she do anything to protect Mercedes? I know that she was actively trying to locate Katrina Mendoza, who left that residence. Where did she interview them? She interviewed them at Homer Beltran's residence off of Caspin Point, I believe it is. And you're saying it was January of 2021? In that December, January timeframe. But I was not present, man, at that at those interviews. But you were the investigator in charge of all this, right? No, ma'am. I was the investigator assigned to the death investigation when the death occurred on January or February 7th. So anything before that, I was not actively involved in that investigation, ma'am. But did you look into what was done before Mercedes' death? I briefly looked into it, yes, ma'am. And what is your recollection, if you have one, of when the last time CPS had an inter interest or interview or contact Again, that, that, with that, Mercedes? That January timeframe. And to your knowledge, what was done to protect Mercedes from that point? I do not recall at this time, ma'am. Don't you think it's important? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, but why don't you recall? We're talking about the death of a child. Object to argumentative. Yeah. Sustained. Okay, from the beginning of your cross-examination, you did general police work when you were with Belt and PD, is that right? Yes, sir. You said in the course of your um, description of your activities there, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I could make a mistake here, but you say said you deal with high media cases. That's right. So media involvement directs your attention, is that correct? That's one aspect, yes, ma'am. Just I didn't realize it was only one. What do you do particularly with media cases? <clears throat> Same as all investigations, ma'am. We and conduct this thorough investigations. Excuse me. There can only be one person speaking at a time. You may answer the question. Same as all investigations, ma'am. But this specifically was Belton when you referred to the media. No, oh, ma'am. I was referring to my duties at the Department of Family and Protective Services. We're calling this interchangeably CPS and Department of Family and what is it? Family and protective services. And protective services, but it's basically the same place. Yes, ma'am. Commonly called CPS. And commonly called the department as well, ma'am. <coughs> and you've been with them for four years. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And you first learned of Mercedes when? On February 7th. Not before that. Not before that, no ma'am. Even though in January, Ms. Bryant apparently interviewed the family, including Mercedes, at Homer's house. Is that Jeff correct? Asked and answered. That'll be our rules. You can answer the question. <laughs> that, that is the history, yes ma'am. Most recent history. It's a history, man. And once again, I'm old. I don't remember everything. Do you recall any follow-up of CPS after that investigation in January of 2021, 2022, right before she died? I recall that investigator Heather Bryant at the time was trying to locate Katrina Mendoza. And there was some disconnect in communication for a period of time towards the end of her or towards the 
towards her investigation in the beginning of our death investigation. Do you have any recollection of what Heather did as a result of the January 22 interview? Did no, she take, should you say there was a misconnect? Object, lack of personal knowledge, he wasn't there. All right, excuse me. You can answer the question if you can answer it, but if you were not present, then the objection will be sustained. It's not present, that's You weren't present, but is that just isolated? Does CPS have isolated interviews here and then investigators later don't know what happens? Is there any connection within your department as to what is done to protect a child? Yes, ma'am. We do go back and look at some of that history, but in the beginning of a death investigation, there's a lot of things occurring right at the beginning of that death investigation. So some, we do go back to that historical information, but initial on that day one, I'm kind of working all those steps that I was talking about earlier, Matt. What could have been done to stop this death investigation Object, by CPS? Object to speculation. Speculation for, may I? Yes, do you want to here? respond to her objection? In regard to speculation, how could it be speculation if he was the investigator in charge of this incident? All right, your objection is overruled. I'm sorry, Your Honor? The objection is overruled. You can answer that, sir. Can you ask a question again, ma'am? I'm sorry. Ma'am, would you read it back, court reporter, please? It could have what can have been done to stop the death investigation of dash objection speculation. That's what I have. Thank you. What could have been done? Object to speculation. Is there Argument any other rule. objection besides speculation? Uh, argumentative. That will be overruled. Overruled. Okay. Answer. As not being the primary investigator in that previous investigation, cannot respond for that investigation. I was only working on the investigation that I was assigned to, ma'am. You have basic procedures, sir, yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when somebody has an investigation and things were not perfect because she, there was a follow-up, exactly what is done to save the children who are being supposedly protected by your agency? Object counsel testifying. Argumentative, lack, I mean, lack of knowledge of what, was, what happened before her death. All right, that'll be overruled unless there's another objection. So to answer your question, ma'am, when I came in the into this death investigation, we did just that. We removed Jordan Lasoya, the surviving child. So we conducted a removal to keep her safe from additional abuse and neglect. As a rule, when somebody is investigating, they can't find somebody that interview needs a follow-up. What, as a rule, does your company do protect the children out there we can we continue to try to strive towards engaging that communication maybe there's a miscommunication with that family but we continue to try to engage that family but each case is different man this case again i'm asking you what could your company, your CPS, have done to protect Mercedes from being killed by whatever? Object to, to vague, object, object to asked and answered. He, he wasn't involved in the previous investigation. All right, that objection will be overruled. Again, ma'am, I wasn't involved in the investigation previous to me. So there is can't account for what happened before me. I can only account for what we did during the course of our investigation, and we did conduct a removal of Jordan Lasoya. Jordan's not dead. Prior to this investigation, I asked you generally, what does CPS do to protect the children that are in danger? 
generally? Generally speaking, there's probably different plans, such as a safety plan. Maybe we have a family member that will come in and kind of assist with that supervision of the children. Uh, sometimes we do what's called family team meetings, where we bring several family members and collaterals or professionals in and try to talk about the issue. Uh, all the way up to removing a child from a home um, and probably facing with... Uh, Where's family. Mercedes? I'm sorry. Was Mercedes removed from the home? No, ma'am. Why not? Again, I cannot answer the questions for an investigation that was previous to me, ma'am. I started the investigation on February 7th when I was notified about the death of Mercedes Lasoya. And I, I've never done a investigation with Mercedes Lasoya alive in all my years of being with the department. I realize that, sir, but you're the investigator at the point of, at least at the point of her death. I've Did you look at it? Uh, let me hear the question. At least at the point of her death. Did you do any investigation to find out what had been done to try to prevent the death? Object to relevance. Sustained. To your knowledge, what, if anything, did CPS do to try to prevent Mercedes' death? Object asked and answered. Object relevance. Sustained. Who is in charge to follow through on cases that are being investigated? Object to relevance. Sustained. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like a ruling on that. Sustained. Right. Sustained. Could I have one? No, why? It's not relevant. It's the, not the relevant. Objection to the, the state's objection was objection relevance. I sustained it. Now, if you want to address as how it's relevant, the court will hear that. I'm asking, Your Honor, how is it relevant? The objection has been made. The court has sustained it. You may ask your next question, counsel. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I don't understand why you ruled that it was irrelevant when we're talking about the death of a child and the follow-up of CPS. All what right, the court do? has made its ruling. The objection from the state was relevance. If you want to respond to their relevance objection, I will hear it. Otherwise, their objection to relevance is sustained and you can ask your next question. When you checked Mercedes' body in the hospital, you said you looked under the clothes, I believe, or the blanket or whatever was on her? The only thing that she had on was a pair of uh, orange underwear. underwear. But, but you did check the body. Yes, ma'am. And you said that there were bruises of varying degrees of age, severity, et cetera. I did not mention anything about bruising and age. I indicated that there was bruises, but I didn't indicate the age of any bruises. You didn't say that some were earlier or some were more recent, that there were a various range of stages. That. You didn't say that? I don't recall saying anything about My age stage. because I don't, I can't. As an investigator, I would elect to utilize medical professionals to indicate those kind of injuries. But you looked at Mercedes' body. Yes, ma'am. And you did see bruises. We've all seen them now with the pictures. Some of them were recent. Again, I'm gonna elect to have a medical personnel answer that type of question, ma'am, as I am not a medical person. Did you notice the color of the bruises? Were some yellow? Were some blue? Were some faded? I observed that some of them appeared to look like a darker, darker than her hue. I would say kind of like a dark uh, grayish, black, bluish type color. Black and blue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, with your observation, was there anything that appeared to be very recent? 
object to ask and answer lack of personal knowledge. All right, that will be overruled. You can answer if you can answer. Object to calls for an opinion. It was overruled. That will be overruled. If you can answer. No, ma'am, I, I don't, I, I can't answer that question because I don't know, I didn't know exactly what was real recent. You couldn't say that it was recent. Did, didn't you say that you saw blood on her face, her mouth, their teeth were out? I observed like abrasions where you can kind of see like the red blood on top of those abrasions. Yes. Okay. And you testified that some teeth were missing. Is that right? I observed like a, a tooth kind of type near the front that looked like it was missing a piece of it or something in the front. The kind child of... was five years old. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Do you are you familiar that children lose their first teeth, their baby teeth at around that age? Yes, ma'am. Could that have been the reason why her teeth were missing? I'm back to speculation. All right, if you can thought. answer. Um you mentioned too that the teeth were were decayed, or there was some discoloration, man. Discoloration. In the yes, teeth. What kind of discoloration? It just looked uh, more yellow, more. Um, it was like a, a yellowish tint than some of the others. Was it about hygiene that you were seeing, or was it actual wounds? Mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, most likely hygiene or something of that nature, man. Now you were present at this child safe interview throughout the whole time, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And as a result of that, what action did you take? As a result of the forensic interview, I went to the apartments to try to backtrack where uh, it happened at. And you had never been there prior to, to no. the Henry B. Apartments? No. Is there any record that your company, excuse me, CPS, had been to that Henry B. Apartment prior to the incident of her death? Object to relevance. All right, that will be uh, sustained. Was there any indication in your records that Heather <clears throat> Bryant had been to the Henry V apartments prior to the death of Mercedes? I don't believe so, ma'am. When you had your interviews with neighbors and people at Henry B, um, They indicated that they had made reports about loud noise and disturbances. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. As a result of those disturbances, was CPS contacted? No, ma'am. Why was it relevant for you to testify that reports had been made? Object. Sustain. What specific steps, uh, steps did CPS, CPS take to follow up on Katrina, who was under investigation? Object relevance. Sustain. Your Honor, it wasn't relevant that there was a follow-up on somebody who was a known abuser? Sustained. Have you, if you recall, any investigation on Jose prior to the death on February 7th? I have had no personal uh, investigation with Jose Ruiz prior to the death of Mercedes Lasoya. 
was there any investigation that you know of into Jose on Hal Ruiz regarding this family? Not that I recall, ma'am. Thank you. Anything else? Isn't it true that your actual last interview uh, with Heather Bryant was in January of 2021, not January of 2022? Objects, um, mistakes. That'll be overruled. You can answer the question. January of 2021? Yes, January of 2021. Did your records indicate that, that it was January of 2021, not 2022? I don't recall that. Pass the witness. Say. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. Is it the relevancy of this law? Six point one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to show you what I have marked with case exhibit number 40. Um, the CPS have a system of keeping notes uh, recorded by the different caseworkers. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, what is state's exhibit number 40? It appears to be some contact narratives, several contact narratives involving uh, Heather Bryant, Tiffany Garland, and uh, Adrienne House. Okay. Is there an entry from January 19th of 2020? January 19th, 2022. Yes, ma'am. And is there a, an entry by Heather Bryant from January 19th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. And is this documenting the encounter that has been at issue that Heather Bryant had with Jordan, Los I mean, sorry, Mercedes Lasoya? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did Heather Bryant notate that there were any injuries on Mercedes Lasoya on January 19th? 2022. This one right here, ma'am, is for Jordan Lasoya. Okay. And she doesn't notate that there's no observed marks or bruises on her. What is a family team meeting? Family team meeting is basically bringing together uh, parents, grandparents at times, uh, various family members, aunts, uncles. Sometimes we even include uh, medical pro professionals sometimes. And it's addressing uh, the issue. Uh, if the issue, for example, deals with some kind of physical abuse, or some kind of uh, narcotic usage in the home. Uh, we'll address those out in the open with the family and talk with the family. It's kind of like a bringing the whole family together and saying, this is the issue that we have at hand. What can we do to remedy this issue? What needs to be in place to kind of remedy that, that issue and, uh, and have an extra set of eyes for that particular uh, issue. Okay. Um, when CPS is about to close a case. Would it be normal for them to have a family team meeting? It is a common practice, yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and why would you have a family team meeting? Before departing the case, we like to bring everyone together uh, to say, okay, before we depart this case, uh, these are the these are our concerns. How you know, making sure that everybody understands those concerns. And then we move forward uh, after that. Okay. Um, how many family team meetings are there typically in um, a CPS investigation? About one. About one. So, yes, ma'am. Probably uh, two if they want to add a another family member that maybe did not show the first one. Okay. Um. And. Um, Yeah. 
Um, on state's exhibit number uh, 40 that I just showed you, um, it looks like um, um, there was contact with the, um, the family on that January 19th, 2022. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, if she goes, if a caseworker goes up to the house, are they going to just talk to one child or will they talk? If both ch children are present, they're going to see both children. Okay. Was, um, did Heather Bryant initiate a removal of Mercedes on that day? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, in fact, she, she had, she was scheduling a family tea meeting for the following week. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach the witness one more time? Yes. Okay. Is this what was this in the English? No, this was um, this was the page. I'm right, just looking for yeah, yeah. the difference. Okay. No, no, this is this one down at the bottom. This is I don't I, different I, no, that's Adrian. That's not I, that's a different oh, excuse me. The party's approached now.
All right, please be seated. All right, state. Yes. I was asking to approach the witness. All right, you may approach. Okay. Um, I am now going to hand you what's been labeled case exhibit number 41, which is the board. Is this the same document? The same type of document? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does this also document Heather Bryant's contact with the family on January 19th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And does looking at this remind you what her contact was that day? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So on January 19th of 2022, um, is there any indication that Mercedes had any bruises of any sort? No, ma'am. Okay. And in fact, didn't, doesn't she document that she seemed healthy and happy? Yes, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. Defense. As a result of that, healthy and happy, why was she trying to do the follow-up and not able to find Katrina? It appears that she was trying to conduct a family team meeting with Katrina Mendoza. It appears. Yes, ma'am. And why was that? Because it's one of those steps that we take in investigations to bring all the family together to address a concern. What was the concern at that point if there were no bruises? Object to lack of personal knowledge. That'll be overruled. Diana, excuse me, would you please do that, Miss Diana? Read it back. At this point, if there were no bruises, objection left. A family team meeting is to address the initial concern that occurred in that particular investigation. Why we got called out to that investigation. And why was that? Object to relevance. That will be overruled. In any particular investigation, we're going to address that initial concern. Now, if other concerns present themselves, we'll address those concerns as well. In this particular situation, it appears that she was happy and healthy and didn't appear to have any bruises. So we're probably speculating. She was trying to address that first uh, concern. However, I, again, I was not involved in that investigation with Heather Bryant. I came later on February 7th when I was called out to the death investigation of Mercedes Masoya. This happy and healthy child was dead three weeks after that interview. CPS did nothing to stop the death of Mercedes LaSoya. That's a compound question, argumentative. Sustained. In your opinion, did CPS do enough to try to save the life of Mercedes LaSoya? Object to relevance. Sustained. Did CPS do anything other than what we've discussed to try to save the life of Mercedes LaSoya? Objection vague, objection relevant. Sustained. Was the proper protocol used by CPS in this investigation to save Mercedes? Object to relevance. Sustained. Could CPS have done anything more to save the life of Mercedes LaSoya? Object to speculation and object to relevance. Sustained. As an investigator, is it your 
requirement to be able to know things like like I've been asking you. Object to relevance. That's sustained. Amazing. Are you? Is it your job to close the case, or is it your job to help the children? Ob object to vague. Object to relevance. Sustained. Pass the witness. No further questions, Charlie. Is this witness excused? Excused from the seat. Defense subject to recall. All right, the rule has been invoked. What that means is you cannot discuss your testimony with anyone. You cannot view anything. The only persons you're allowed to speak to are attorneys for the state and the defense. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Make sure that you're available in case you're recalled. Yes, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we're going to take our uh, break for the day because I promised you all that if possible, I would have you out before rush hour traffic. These are my instructions, and I'm going to give you these instructions always when we're taking a break and we're recessing. Number one, you're not to start deliberating internally with yourself or with each other. You're not allowed to talk to anybody about anything that you've heard uh, in this courtroom as it relates to this trial. You are not allowed to do any investigation. You're not allowed to watch anything. If someone ends up trying to speak to you about what you've heard, you need to let them know that you're a juror and not pay any attention to them. If you happen to see anything, you're to turn it and not pay any attention to it. Everything that you need to know about this case is to come from inside the courtroom. Does everyone understand? All right, so what we can go off the record. We're gonna start tomorrow at 10. Now, I will tell you the same instructions I gave you about having a parking space applies, but you're more than welcome to bring uh, your breakfast, your lunch, whatever, Deputy Laura will show you where that can be placed. Uh, so I will see you tomorrow at 10. Uh, any questions? Yes. It appears that we may end up going into next week. All right. But I know that some of you have concerns, maybe are issues with the job. So I did sign a sheet letting them know that you all are here. And if anyone else needs documentation for the employment that they're actually here, uh, we will provide that. All right, thank you all. All right, for the jury. All right, everyone, please be seated. Oh, wish you can shut it down. All right, is if there's any other videos or any other redactions that need to be made to videos, we need to work on that now. Yes, Judge, we are actually making a copy of a redacted video that we are going to give over to defense so they can view it. All right, so we're going to stay here till that's viewed. How long is that video? Uh, I do not know off the top of my head, Judge. I think it's, it is longer than an hour, but we can. All right. And which? Yes. Yeah. And who is this video of? The defendant and detective size. All right. So have you all had a chance to? I'll see and watch it just to check the redactions or whatever. All right. So other than the redactions, are you all going to need a ruling from the court on this video? I don't well, I, I have to see if we had agreed on redactions. I think I had pointed out some concerns. All right, so we will stay here till that is done, and I will stay here as well. But officially, we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I want to say there's also another one and an interview between the defendant and Detective Lloyd, but we did show uh, them the redactions earlier today. There is an additional one they wanted us to do, and we have done that. All right. Well, All right. Yeah, so Lloyd and his son are like on the same day. Yeah, yeah. they're right after. We okay, we, we will stay here till that is done. <laughs> All right.